So I've got my racing quad here, and I've been having a problem with it. I have a transmitter under here, oh, under here, and I've been uh, using this physical switch here to turn that transmitter off and on, uh, so that I can turn on the battery power to the quad without uh, powering up the transmitter in case I'm with a group of people and I don't want to immediately step on everyone. So. That switch has been giving me problems. It's kind of loose, and I've been losing video during the uh, middle of flights. So today, I'm going to try to remove that switch and replace it with something that my friend Evan bought me, or really he bought himself and gave to me, which is this um, thing here. So this is an RC switch that will take a pulse width modulated signal and uh, use a very small MOSFET to turn uh, power on and off to something else. And I think it can handle 500 milliamps. I got a header here, I have a piece of heat shrink tubing to put it in, and I have a male and female uh, power cable of the same type that my transmitter is uh, using to connect to 12 volt power on my quad. So now I'm going to disassemble the quad, clean it up, it's got a lot of grass on it, <laughs> and other junk, and uh, get ready to try and install the switch and find out you know, what the data sheet is for it and so on, and figure out how to use it. Anyway. Anyway. I got this green, uh, this cool green camera, what do you call it? I guess it's like a vibration dampener. Saw some comment on Reddit one time. Somebody had 3D printed these things and was uh, selling them for cheap, so I picked one up. Uh, people have asked me about it ever since, but I've never been able to find the original place when I bought them. So I haven't been able to refer anything. I'm sure the, the author, or the creator of this thing would love it if I would refer him sales, but... Can't find it. Anyway, it's a wonderful little uh, camera mount. A little bit stiff though. I mean, I still get vibrations with it, but I do like how durable it is and how well it holds the Mobius. Because it's, if you probably, if you ever use the Mobius, you know it's really easy to lose one. You crash, and then the little, little thing gets stuck in the grass somewhere. It's gone, as far as you can tell. Okay, so. Uh, the way I've assembled my quad is I've mounted the transmitter and the camera and most of the video set up on the top, which is connected via this power cable, which is what we're going to intercept today, to, I mean, I suppose this is kind of connected to the top too, but only as a side effect of it going through my, uh, I just mounted the antennas on the top via hot glue. Those kind of just stick out, so I'm just going to leave that to the side there. And I'm just trying to get a little bit, oh gosh, that grass is like glued on. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Okay, well, forget that. Um, I'm going to get the props off just for convenience. i got to get rid of this inline switch that I've added and replace it with this guy after I figure out how, to, how that guy works. So I guess I'll see you again once I've uh, read the data sheet for this little guy. Okay, so having supposedly figured out how to wire this up, I'm going to start by putting the load uh, high on the board. And yes, I could use clips for this, but eh, whatever. That flowed nicely enough. All right. I don't know if that kind of worked or not, but I... So, now I got my thingamajiggers. According to that spec, it goes like this. It goes ground, positive signal on these three pins. And then the stuff on the other side is a logic power supply. Okay, welcome back. So. Uh, I've got this wired up with the load coming off the top two pins, the supply for the load going into the second row of pins, the RC, VCC, ground, and signal coming into this three at the bottom, and on the other side, 
there are from the bottom up a ground pin for supplying uh, a ground pin and a VCC pin for supplying voltage to this chip's logic and then uh, s something else here these next two pins are like diagnostics so the third one up from the bottom is called out and indicates whether the MOSFET is on and I assume it does that with like the same voltage supply uh, logic voltage level instead of just reading off the MOSFET and the good pin is the one at the top which indicates whether there is a valid RC signal detectable so now I have to decide basically how to power this I can't power it based on the uh, this here there is a bridge for that up here at the top you can bridge these two contacts, sorry, you can see that, there's two contacts just underneath that red wire down there. You can bridge those two contacts um, in order to supply voltage to this chip with this load, but this is 12 volts on my rig, so I can't give this thing 12 volts, I have to give it somewhere between 2.5 and 5.5. And and now this guy has a 2.5 5.5 volt, and I, there's another bridge down here just for doing that. There's a VCC to VRC bridge, and I'm going to use that. I'm going to bridge those contacts and bridge the grounds if they are not. They're already connected. So um, I'm just going to bridge those two contacts with a small piece of wire, and then we should be able to power this from the receiver, and then we'll plug in a receiver to it and we'll check the good pin uh, with the um, voltmeter Let's see what that looks like you can see all right we, we might be able to do this oh god damn it just hold still you little bastard I think I got him. Shit! Excuse my language. <laughs> Alright, let's look at that in the video and see if we got it how I expected it to happen. Come on. Did I accidentally bridge that thing? It seems that's okay. So yeah, we're going to call that done. Okay, so I've got my uh, quadcopter's receiver hooked up to the little doohickey on channel 8 and I have my voltage uh, multimeter on voltage mode and I'm gonna try and monitor the voltage of this pin called good okay if anything catches on fire I'm gonna pull it all is well I think so we have a receiver 5 volts on the good signal looks like he's uh, he's alive so that's awesome so next I'm going to try to hook up my uh, this small battery here actually I'll just okay so now I've got it hooked up in sort of uh, what would be a flight mode um, the quadcopter's battery is going to supply power to the little chips uh, power supply and the receiver is going to supply the logic power and then I've got the load itself there's no load but I've got my voltage meter on the output that would turn the transmitter on and off um, which is what I'm going to try and turn off on and off this chip and now I'm going to hook the battery up and if the magic smoke is going to get out it's going to happen now but what I'm going to look for is I'm going to hit the battery up if it's anything catching on fire I'm going to unplug it but everything's if everything's fine I'm going to then go to my uh, controller over here and try to like get channel 8 to turn on and off and I hopefully will be able to see that turning on and off on my voltmeter so here we go fire no fire hey not only is there no fire there's a tiny blinky yellow light on the thingy which is wonderful because it's like I'm alive so here we go I see zero volts on my voltmeter I've got come up with a way to send a signal on channel 8. Okay, so let's see if we can figure that out. 
So I did eventually find another setting on my Turner GX9 that lets me uh, turn the thing on and off with a switch. It's the switch up here on the corner, and it's called throttle hold. You had to figure that out by guesswork because there's nothing on the corner that says throttle hold, and it seems like I wanted to use this switch, but I can't find it. So throttle hold it is. The switch, when I turn it, goes uh, doink, and that goes up 12 volts. Fantastic. Works as expected. But now, I gotta put everything back together and get the output of that power connected to the transmitter, video transmitter, and uh, hook up all my stuff and see if it does what it's supposed to. Well, that was uh, that went pretty smoothly. So I've got my goggles, receiver, quad, and uh, transmitter here for a full test of the switch to see if it really turns the uh, video transmitter on and off. So let's power it all up and see if it does what it's supposed to do. Okay, first this receiver guy. That's going to just sit there and receive on channel 1. Okay. Goggles, got no signal at the moment. Okay. So we're going to plug that in. We have no signal. We're going to cut this on. All switches in the deactivated mode. No? Okay, they're supposed to be the other way. Alright, there we go. Let's check our signal. 
no signal. And we flip the transmitter switch, and we still got no signal. Well, I did get it working. So, my switch now does turn my transmitter off and on. And I could tell that it was on because it was getting warm. The problem was actually this connection here to the camera, which is seen better days, but I don't have another plug of that exact shape, and I've had to salvage that one over and over again, so it's, in, it's just in bad shape. But you can see now in my goggles that I have video, and if I flip the switch, no video. Flip the switch, video's back. So it's working. Thank you very much, uh, unnamed friend. You know who you are for the little gadget, and I'll see you on race day.